Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm Joy Cardine, and I'd like to introduce Rebecca Kemble, running for Alder from District 18. As we begin, please tell our viewers a bit about how your educational, vocational, and civic experience has prepared you for the position and why you decided to run for Alder. Hi, Joy. Thanks for having me. Um, well, I decided to run for Alder in 2015 as I saw state politics going in a very scary direction and national politics soon followed. And I was really worried that organized people and, the, and people's needs in community would no longer have a voice, uh, even in local government, as you know, we saw in what happened in state government. So I had been a community activist. I had been um, working to support kids in schools, to support our Northside schools to stay open. I had you know, been a single mom of three kids navigating bureaucratic systems, the county you know, food assistance and childcare assistance systems. And I realized that you know, people, we all own our local governments and we who care about it, we can and should have a voice. And those of us who have been you know, organizing in the community um, should really step up and bring that voice into formal decision-making. So that's why I, I decided to run in 2015. And my experience as Alder these past six years have really just underscored that need for community voice. So we have done a lot on the North side to um, advocate for safer communities, to advocate for youth leadership, to advocate for the clean environment. And uh, I'm, I'm, I really love the north side and the district I live in because people are so engaged and I'm honored to um, have been elected to represent them on the council. What issue or issues have you identified as being of primary concern to the residents of your district and how would you approach tackling them? Um, there's a couple main issues. Housing stability is key um, for people with fixed incomes, for people with low incomes, uh, we've seen our uh, land values skyrocket, property taxes has skyrocketed. And I live in a district where there are a lot of folks on fixed incomes and who in the last couple of years have been talking about, we might need to move if our property taxes keep getting raised. Likewise, the rent is too high for a lot of folks. And there's a lot of mobility of uh, families earning low income. So I have worked really hard on affordable housing and looking forward, um, I'm working with the Northside Planning Council land use group with uh, Madison Area Community Land Trust, Commonwealth Development to really push the boundaries of how we do affordable housing in the city of Madison to increase our land banking program to get the city to purchase land and get it off the speculative market so we can have create a base for truly affordable housing. I've also pushed the assessor's office to, to do a study of the ratio between commercial, commercial property taxpayers and residential property taxpayers to make sure that the, the burden doesn't unduly fall on residential property taxpayers. We're also facing serious uh, environmental justice issues on the north side with the PFAS contamination from the airport and at Oscar Mayer. Um, this is a huge concern for our residents. Um, and, and also um, related to that, the, the coming of the F-35 jets and all of the construction that needs to happen at the airport to make way for them. I have um, worked with Clean Skies, uh, uh, Safe Skies Clean Water Coalition and Eakin Park Resistance to make sure that that mess gets clean up, cleaned up before any construction gets done um, and that the city does its due diligence before purchasing any property that's contaminated. There's going to be a referendum, an advisory referendum on the ballot in April about a number of modifications to the Common Council, including changing the number of members, making it full time, changing the term of office. Which of the ideas being advanced do you embrace and why or why not? Thank you. Um, I served on the task force on government structure. And interestingly enough, most of our discussions had to do with increasing 
resident engagement and participation in city government and um, sort of rationalizing our boards, commissions and committee structure uh, for resident engagement and, and policy making. And we spent, we did spend some time on the council um, issues, but mostly what we talked about was the need to make government more open to the people. And along those lines, uh, the, the, the task force realized that um, participation as a candidate on the city council was really um, difficult for people who had families, for, for working people, for people who had you know, low to moderate income, because it's essentially, um, you know, we get a small stipend every month for the work. So people like me who work third shift weekends, um, I, in my life, I can, I can afford to, to essentially do a volunteer job, but there's a lot of people in the city who can't. So one um, thing I do support is uh, paying, paying alders for the work they do. I do not support reducing the number of alders on council. I think, I mean, if anything, as we grow in and annex other, um, you know, Blooming Grove and the town of Madison, we should think about increasing it. Um, and as to the terms, um, that was a completely non-controversial issue. And when we talked about pros and cons of two year to four year terms, we couldn't really think of too many cons um, about going to four years. So, uh, so I'm behind that as well. Homelessness, evictions, and lack of affordable housing are vexing problems for Madison that seem to have been exacerbated in the time of COVID-19. What ideas would you advance or support to help solve these problems? I have been working all summer with community advocates, with city staff, trying to find a more permanent and sustainable solution for people who don't have housing, um, including a better shelter system and actual, actual affordable housing for people who don't have, currently have housing, families living in cars, families doubling up. Um, I have to say this has been a huge issue that I've paid a lot of attention to my entire time on council. Um, I've supported budget amendments to support um, Legal Action Wisconsin to defend people in eviction court. And what they find, found out the first year that they had the help they needed was that most of the people who showed up to their cases in eviction court got their cases thrown out. So we found out that people were being evicted illegally and unnecessarily. And until they got that representation they needed in court, um, that they, you know, we were able to reduce uh, ev evictions that way. It's really important that we work with our community partners. Um, we have many dozens of nonprofits in Madison who support people who are experiencing houselessness, who are experiencing eviction. We need to support them. And as I said, the, the real long-term solution is to create permanently affordable housing by getting land off the speculative market so that we can really invest the city and, and the city as we, all of us as a, pe as a people can invest in housing for people um, so that they don't get pushed out into you know, other counties or the rest of the county where you know, there's transportation problems to jobs and just exacerbating those issues. And I have to say those issues, housing, um, housing insecurity and instability is highly racialized in the city. So it's, um, you know, according to researchers at UW Madison, it's single black women who suffer the most from this issue. So if, if we have to do everything we can to support them and their families and housing stability. With the selection of a new police chief and the creation of a community oversight board, there's a lot of attention focused on policing and criminal justice both from the perspective of racial equity and law enforcement and the concern of many citizens that in fact crime, especially car thefts and home burglaries is increasing and that police response is inadequate. How would you deal with these concerns? Well, I've been involved in um, supporting the police department to be the best de police department it can be since I started on council. Um, 
And this summer we worked uh, on the Alder work group to create the ordinance that established the community oversight board. So what, what we discovered five, six years ago with the first body cam committee was that there's a huge lack of trust in, between communities of color and the police department. Um, and that is based on how folks are treated in community. That is based on the um, incredible racial disparities in arrests and incarceration in our community. So I'm really looking forward to working with the new chief on getting those recommendations that have been the result of five years and many hundreds of people's uh, work on, on um, police reform to get those implemented in a good way. And I'm really excited to see how our new independent monitor and civilian oversight board um, can help in that process. So we have, um, the pandemic has been rough on everyone. Well, maybe not everyone, but on a lot of people. And nationwide, we've seen an increase in community, um, community violence, in shootings, in car thefts. And even the police will tell you that more police will not stop that kind of activity. And the police have said that. So what we really need to do is address that um, alienation in those people who are choosing to do antisocial behaviors like that and um, support community services that support the families to include, to be more inclusive and more engaging of the youth. So I think one thing that we're going to do um, on the north side is expand the Warner Park Community, Cent community Rec Center to allow for a lot more space for youth activities, um, and for youth engagement by adults in the community. And I think that will go a long way towards uh, helping young people feel less alienated and more a part of our community and, and thus will we'll, we'll not choose to do harm. Madison businesses of all kinds have been severely stressed during the past year. What if anything would you propose to support business revitalization? Well, I have supported a number of, uh, a number of initiatives including the Small Business Economic Recovery Fund, which is, I think, $7.5 million over three years, $2.5 million this year to support our small businesses owned by people of color. And those are the most fragile businesses. Those are the businesses that also employ the most people of color. And uh, our, our Economic Development Department has recently um, in releasing these funds have found out that I think we've gotten over 600 applications to this fund for support for them to just keep their doors open um, until such time as we can all be safe together. I think it's small business, small businesses are the root of our economy um, in Madison. And uh, another issue um, that I've been supporting and that I ran in um, on my first campaign is supporting the Worker Cooperative Development Initiative, which is there to assist workers, many of whom are marginalized from the formal economy for one reason or another, to form their own cooperative businesses. And so they can really determine their own destiny. Um, so that has been fairly successful. We've created uh, many small businesses out of that. And uh, not just the creation of the businesses, but the wraparound support services um, and the networking of businesses to business so that uh, they can share resources in times like this. So um, I'm all in for um, keeping our small businesses alive and doing uh, whatever we can to both, you know, patronize them as individuals, but give whatever support we can uh, as a city as well. What measures should Madison take to increase our city's environmental sustainability? Uh, lots and lots of measures. We can't do enough measures. And, and I would go beyond saying environmental sustainability, but um, talking about actually grappling seriously with the climate crisis. Um, because as we saw, you know, the last couple summers, we are prone to catastrophic flooding. Um, so we need to work really hard to make sure our infrastructure is um, adequate, our green infrastructure is adequate. 
We need to make sure we keep up the pace of solar installations on all of our city uh, buildings. We're, we're slated to have all of our buildings be carbon zero by 2030, but I think we can do better than that. We need to transition our bus fleet to uh, electric as soon as we can. And we need to advocate for the DNR uh, to, to lower the lake level so that we're not as threatened by the catastrophic summer floodings that, that we have received. Um, we also need to be super proactive in cleaning up what messes there are when we are responsible for them. Um, our water, I mean, we are, we're a community defined by water. My district is a community surrounded by water, the Cherokee Marsh, Lake Mendota. I mean, we, without the water, we're, I mean, we're, we're not hardly Madison anymore. We're not in Isthmus. Uh, and we need to make sure it is, um, especially our, our drinking water, but also our surface waters are healthy and fresh. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Um, I'd like to say just thank you for, if you're watching, you're an engaged resident and we need, we need more of you. Um, we elected officials are just, you know, one point of contact with the city government. There are multiple more ways to engage with policymaking, with bringing um, your issues that you're concerned about to our attention. And I know on the north side, we are a really engaged lot. We have our north side planning council. We have our neighborhood associations. We have um, so many, um, so many active residents and apartment complexes who advocate for, for tenants, et cetera. And I've worked with so many of you. Um, and also the, um, the, the nonprofit of the year a couple of years ago, Friends of Cherokee Marsh. Um, so just thank you for all of your work in, in community. Can, please continue to keep in touch and um, let's build a better Madison together. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca Kemble, for speaking with us and to the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, thank you for joining us.